Wow! This is an amazing vivarium. It includes many different animals and plants, even including carnivorous ones. Ants as well. Different species living side by side and queens moving into natural claustral chambers. Will this work? Or will the ants fight to death? They might as well just live side by side, not fighting and cooperating instead. Please come along on this video full of not only peculiar observations until the very end, but it also includes my tutorial on how to create one of these amazing vivariums. I will share every thought and idea that made this unique vivarium blossom. Welcome and I hope you have a fantastic time watching. Hi guys, it's Nordic Ants again. I decided before this to build something more advanced and complex. Click the annotation on the top right corner to see my plan. But since I'm moving to Thailand, I considered building something more sustainable and easy to maintain. Talking about Thailand, I need you guys help right now. Choosing the ant species that I should keep there. I have come up with five contestants that you will vote for. First, we have Odontomachus, also known as Trap Giants, a very impressive species. I've kept them before and can do it again. I also have a tutorial on them. Click the annotation once again. Next contestant is the Weaver Ants, a strict arboreal species that uses their own larvae as a tool to produce silk. After them, I've been requested to keep Camponotus gigas, the biggest ant on the surface of the earth. Then after that, Solinopsis geminata. I guess that every single one of you follows Ants Canada and knows exactly what I'm talking about. Last, but certainly not the smallest, <laughs> is by some called the dinosaur ants of the genus Diacama. This species is also already kept by Ants International. Please check out this video about it if you are uncertain about the species. You guys had many awesome ideas and don't worry if your species didn't come up, I'll keep more. This is just a guideline for me so I can entertain you guys as much as possible later on. But now, let's do this guys, I'm diving right into it. So if you want to build something like this, you'll need two things. A nice big aquarium and nature. Be sure to have permission to acquire all the natural resources you take and have others in mind as well. Take only what you need, and only common plants and animals. Moving on to step 1. Having the transparent container of yours placed on a table, you start by creating the false bottom. Since I'm housing different ant species, I wanted to divide their digging medium in two parts, as I didn't want them to dig into each other's nests. Making a false bottom, you can use gravel, small stones, or hydrograins. I decided to use both stones and hydrograins. I don't know why, because I can, maybe. Also I had to cut the substrate divider. Cut, I placed it on the false bottom. Now the foundation is found, finally done. As all precipitated water will end up in the bottom of the vivarium, the false bottom and the substrate divider will together not only prevent roots from reaching down to eventually drown and rot, but also prevent the water from the bottom to create an unwanted mud with the dirt. Now we come to the exciting part, adding the soil and soon the plants. The soil mixture, I think, should always be chosen with care, especially when housing ants, as they may have deferred preferences. A tip is to search for a wild colony of the species you plan to house, and then give a resembling habitat and soil. I often take a nice mixture from my compost. Not only does it contain a lot of nutrients, but also a lot of decomposers as springtails that will prevent mold and unwanted shrooms to develop. This is a risk too, as you don't know what creatures might appear in your vivarium later on, but to be frank, I don't mind the surprises. Adding the soil, keep in mind that you can create your own landscape and that adding the plants will add some dirt as well. Concerning the landscape, I prefer 
and would recommend you to have a highly placed background and then lower the level until the front. This will create a bigger area of ground for your ants and make it more visible from the side as well. This is not all the substrate I will add to. Um, I will for example add some sand later on. Keep in mind creating this. Diversity creates more opportunities. Don't mind the imbalance. Nature will even it out afterwards. Time to add the plants. I first added my only non-native plant. The Ficus Benjamina. I think it's pronounced like that, I don't know. Uh, it's pretty cool as I hope it will have the larve population in check. How? By cutting it, you can see some white liquid pouring out. This liquid is quickly regurgitated by the plant when an intruder bites one of its leaves. Inhaled by the intruder, the liquid quickly evaporates, leaving a tangling mess on the intruder's head. Unable to breathe or to move, the intruder quickly passes away. Doing this will not only feed my ants, but also keep the larvae population in check, as they are notorious herbivores, having eaten all the plants in my precedent vivariums. This also shows that if you have an unwanted organism in your vivarium, you can make it disappear by adding another organism that will help you. After these three looking plants were planted and rooted, I placed some more permanent structures, like pieces of wood. Then after that, I planted a moisture loving carnivorous plant. To give it the moisture it needs, I planted it over a watertight feeding bowl to contain as much water as possible. Then I planted and arranged the rest of the green, all native and acquired from my garden and neighboring forest. What a result! East side, open air with high treetops, including a very nice half bird piece of wood. Perfect for our Caponodus colony. Venturing west, you can enter a lush habitat covered in vegetation, perfect for aphid tending ant species. A wild strawberry plant for our fructose loving inhabitants. A lot of moss that not only gives a lot of possible shelter and hiding spots but it also absorbs a lot of humidity for our moisture-loving inhabitants. Then, to the left, is a nice carnivorous plant, ready to reduce any overpopulation. To top it off, a nice piece of bark placed against the glass to give us a look inside, enabling us to observe the wood-loving population of our vivarium. All done, I let it all grow in and settle for 24 hours. Next day I decided to add succulent plants behind the ficus plants. Adding plants anytime shouldn't be any problems unless you dig up the entire vivarium of course. Added, I now moved over to the exciting part, introducing this vivarium's first for Missidae inhabitants, ants. First in is my Camponodus ligniperdus colony, Europe's biggest ant species. I've chosen them because they are big and cool as well, but most importantly, not territorial. By disturbing their nest, or maybe somewhere around their nest, uh, you can see that if they attack, they are territorial. If not, they might not be. This hasn't been documented before, what I know, to mix uh, species, but yeah, we'll see later on, this is an experiment. I have decided to place their nest here, to maybe try to encourage them to move into the piece of wood by the glass. I also house them in an Ants Canada hybrid nest. What I love with these ones is that when you move them, you simply take away the water source, which eases the moving process. Placed, we now wait for our first brave worker to forage this new habitat. Oh look, there is a curious one, looking out. Oh, two are doing it. Oh no, he left him alone. Cool, go explore, man. They are not that excited. Normally I have seen some workers freak out when being introduced to a natural setup. Exploring foragers showed me how easy they also could pass my overpopulation defense. But yeah, I'm not so worried about their overpopulation. After that I introduced a huge acorn ant colony. 
they will easily adapt to their new environment. They are very opportunistic with choosing places for the nest, as in their name. After them, I introduced a small leptothorax queen I caught in a pine. She has a batch of eggs and I hope she will be able to start off a new colony in my vivarium. The formicarium now started to boost in life, especially the acorn ants, all foraged every corner of the vivarium. I now decided to add honey to see which species that might find it first. As guest, the camps, or camponotus, found it first. But the acorns, should we call them that? I, I call them that, the acorn ants. Uh, anyways, the acorns weren't far away. I did the same with a pre-crushed mealworm. Same results. I now also noticed the leptothorax queen moving in. Look how shiny she is! Everything is going just fine until I introduce the umbratus colony. I introduced them and placed uh, fresh honey beside them for them to strengthen up. The first worker was an umbratus one. Very cool. Look at him go out. Look how cute she is, just wandering around. She looks excited. Well, it didn't take long until a bunch of workers, both slaves and umbratus workers, found the honey. This was awesome. Everything had gone as expected. I decided to after rub a big drop of honey on a rock to see what species might come up and see it first and we may learn the possible hierarchy of my vivarium concerning the ant population. The drop was quickly found by an acorn ant. Then came a Niger slave from the Umbratus colony. No interference, they actually just ignore each other completely. But then came a Camponotus worker. She had scared away the acorn ant, but apparently didn't mind the other one. Well, look how close they are. But she pushed, she pushed away all other ants. No, we should, is there gonna be a fight? Or maybe it was just unintentionally. I came back later to see that all three introduced species were having dinner together. Holy, what a success. This vivarium is awesome. I stayed for hours, just watching not only the ants interfere with each other, but also the other organisms. Well, that's about it. Don't forget to vote for my tropical species to keep. Then like and subscribe if you liked it. And for your northern living ant keepers following my channel, please leave a comment in the comment section about what queens you have caught this summer. I will read it. Hey man, what are you doing? Have a fantastic day and uh, subscribe. Come on.